seven, five, four, two, All right. Hello, hello. Missed yesterday's live, but watched today. Good stuff, especially the improved method for step knots. Thanks, buddy. All right, we are just finishing up the day, packaging up some orders that came in. Um, so if you hear a little bit of, I think that's the last one, right, Gar? Cool. So just package up our orders. UPS man is almost exactly on the dot at four o'clock, so he'll probably pop in. Uh, our good friend Ben, and we're just getting ready to get going. So uh, while we're waiting to start, let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. Let us know if you've been here the past couple of days, if it's your first time tuning in. Um, super excited to be back here for the fifth and final day of the virtual trade show. So thank you guys for following along. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we honestly, we miss going to Harrisburg, getting to meet everybody, getting to actually educate guys in person and put the products in your hands, let you know how comfortable a saddle hunting can be and just to interact and connect with you. So thanks for being here. Thanks for putting up with us as we kind of figure out some new technological skill sets. Um, we are more hunters and product makers than tech savvy marketers, but we are working on improving every day. So thank you for your patience. Looks like we got some Chris from Connecticut. Hey Chris, how's it going? Chris Novak, what's up? Uh, G-Man from North Carolina, Peace Stews, America, nice. We got S. Peterman from Oklahoma, Cincinnati, Ohio. We got family in Cincinnati. Uh, Nova Scotia, very cool. Alabama is home now. Sneaky deer. Yeah, we got sneaky deer in New England, too. First time, Idaho. Want to learn how to get these things rock solid and very loose bark cottonwoods. Cool. So we're definitely going to – today's focus is um, knots, knot techniques, tension knots for saddle hunting. Um, and we're going to get into – we haven't really – we've touched on the step ladder every day because that is our main product. But today we're going to dive in into some tips and techniques, how to get them rock solid. Uh, tree not tying techniques that we touched on some other days, but now we'll actually go into them um, in depth. So while we're doing that, hold on one second. Got this awesome t-shirt. We're going to give it away to somebody um, at some point on the live. Uh, I don't know when, honest, we're going to wait for more people to tune in. So if you're commenting at some point, I'm just going to scroll. I'm going to say t-shirt time and whoever's name I land on win this nice t-shirt. So send us an email if it's you, and we'll get it in your hands. Other than that, you guys know we've been waiting to give away a Berserker. Um, all week we've been telling you how to enter for the giveaway. There's still time to enter. We're not going to pull a name until this weekend. It'll be a random draw. Um, you can still enter by following us on Instagram, subscribing to our YouTube channel. On our Instagram page, there is a picture of the Berserker. Go ahead, comment on that picture, tag three buddies, share it to your story. Every time you interact, you do something, you get an additional chance to win. Um, so we're really looking forward to giving that away and getting it in your hands. Um, and with that, just happy you're here. And I'm going to go to grab Drew. So stay tuned. So you guys know, no Insta account, oh well. Michael, don't worry if you're on Facebook, follow us on Facebook. It looks like you're on YouTube right now, so give us a subscribe and we'll enter you in. Uh, don't worry about not having an Instagram account. All right. Okay. Here we go. What are we doing? Nuts. Huh? Nuts. Uh, I'll start with a step with nuts. Okay. All right, we'll start with uh, my need to copy the girls. All right, what's going on, everyone? I'm just going to do a couple basic, go over a couple basic knots. Uh, 
that could be good for you to know for saddle hunting. We get a lot of questions through emails. Uh, so I'll start with the most basic knot. Uh, it's actually called a bite. And this is what you would put at the end of your tether or your lines in line. Uh, there's two ways to do it. One way that I like to do is to make a figure eight at the end of my tether and clip it back into my carabiner. So that creates basically an extra handle uh, for your arms when you're sitting there. Or the biggest point is it's a double safety. So if anything ever happens up here, you're still connected to the rope and the carabiner here. So that's one way I can go over that in a minute. But the other way, uh, especially for a lines and line, uh, you could do a bite at the end of the rope. So when we when we sell the KISS line system, we put a bite on the end of it, but say you take it apart, you need to figure out how to put it back together. This is our Sterling Oplux eight millimeter rope with a six inch splice die on the end. So at the end of the rope, the tail end, what I'll do for a bite is you just take the rope, you'll double it over, make an X, just like that. Pull the X open so there's a hole and you go right between so you're basically making two circles. We got a lot of cameras going here. And then just pull it tight. So that way, say you're using the Kong duck. If the duck ever slips, it's going to stop. It's a stop or not, a bite, whatever you want to call it. So at the tail end, any rope, if you don't want to make a loop, that's your knot right there. Uh, you could even, so if you didn't get that, you can go into YouTube and just search bite on the end of the rope. Um, but again, I can go over that again. Or if you want, you can just do something as simple as an overhand knot. The bite just creates a bigger knot at the end. So again, make your X, make your two loops, pull that X apart, and go right through. That's it. If you wanted to make a loop like I do at the end of your rope, you're going to want to, this is called, this is a figure eight. So you could do something as simple as an overhand knot, which is just making a loop, twisting it. Everyone knows how to do an overhand knot and bringing it back through. The biggest thing to any knot though, is to make sure you dress the rope. So this rope is dressed. By dressed, this means that you can see that each rope is parallel to each other. So it's all uniform. An undressed knot, would be something like this. So you see how the rope is biting on top of the next rope. It's not dressed up nice and clean. So the only problem was that rope was flipped up. So just bring it down and you want every rope to be parallel with each other as they go through the, the knot. So that's an overhand knot. We'll do a figure eight. Figure eight, you're gonna want a little bit more length of the rope. You'll take it again, always keeping your rope together, parallel. You take your rope, flip it over, around, and back through. So you're making basically another knock compared to the overhand. And then again, dress it. So you have each rope being parallel going around the, the knot. So that's a, that's a nice dressed figure eight. And again, the best way to learn is go on to Google or YouTube and Google's the best. Well, they'll show pictures every, each step to take. Um, and then say on your TVAC, with your, if you're using a Prusik, Sewn Prusik, I'll go through the Sewn Prusik how to tie it and then I'll go, how to tie, go through how to tie a Prusik with a fisherman's knot. So a fisherman's knot would just replace this. Sorry, we're packaging stuff fiercely. Um, anyway, this is this is the 13-inch Prusik TVAC line, six millimeter line that comes with the Kiss line kit, or you can order this separately. Uh, so you're going to want to start here to make your Prusik. You just keep rolling the rope around. You do three loops. Each loop is on the outside. And then again, this is dressing the knot. Pull it in. So 
So that's a dressed Prusik knot right there. Three loops on each side. So say, say you're climbing, and as you put tension on it, this one rope might slip over, and then it might be hard to adjust the knot. So what you're gonna do is just flip that, that loop that went over the other rope, just flip it back up and redress the knot. If, say you get your kiss line in the, in the mail, and it's super loose. From packaging, it was jumping around, and you're saying it doesn't work. That's because the knot is not dressed. See how loose it is? So you're gonna wanna redress the knot. Just keep rolling them until they're tight, pull them, and tighten it. So that knot is now dressed, and it'll bite. So that's a Prusik with the loop, the T-back. I'll show you the other way. If you're going to take two ropes, try to put them together, so an eight millimeter rope, and you're going to tie a Prusik to it, what you're going to do, take your two tail ends, put them together, go under the eight millimeter rope, and you do the same exact thing, but the ends are not tied together. You can do it that way, and then you tie your double fishermans. It might be easier at first to take your rope, and you're going to want your double fishermans to the side. So I usually go like this. Okay, so, so let me start over. Line your ends up. Double fisherman's knot is basically replacing the splice. Put your ends right together. You're going to loop around. And it's kind of the same thing as a bite. You're going to make an X. Bring that tail end around and put it through the X. That creates one end. And then you're going to take your other end. Same thing. Make the X. And then go back through your X with your tail end. So I basically made a bite on each side of this rope. And then it goes together like this. So you can... It's a cool knot too for any adjustable loop, loop, any adjustable loop you want to make <laughs> because you can separate it like that or you can pull it in. So I'll pull it in, make Not it tight. A professional production studio. Nah. <laughs> and then same thing as with the sewn eye. You're just going to make your Prusik. It's just three loops. Three loops is the standard. You could do four. And again, dress it. And it's good to go. So this is your difference. This is a Prusik with a double fisherman's knot at the end. And this is your Prusik with the sewn eye. So basically same things. This is just a little bit more sleek. Uh, both have pretty much the same strength. So that's about it. Those are your, your basic knots. I would, I would de definitely suggest everyone mess around with, learn how to tie your knots, because you never know if you're in the woods and say your Prusa comes undone for some reason, or you, you slip it off the rope on accident, or something happens, you want to be able to retie a knot, uh, or a figure eight, you want to tie it real quick, should be able to tie a knot in the dark um, to be confident in your system. Any questions we got on the ropes? Uh, Michael Zakari said, wouldn't want it to be too professional. Yeah, no, we're, we're not too professional. And Darren can't wait to get steps. Hi from, I think that means Australia. I'm blind. Hey, like... Yeah, but it looks good. I thought that was me just having trouble with my top plastic boot rolling over after sitting in the tree for a while. Yeah, that, that's a big problem. Not a problem, but yeah, when that top loop, when you're hanging, when it rolls over like that, it's a lot harder to adjust because the knot is out of, out of figure. It's not dressed. So it'll do that, and it's super strong, and it'll bite hard, but it's hard to adjust. So just, yep, just roll that baby back up. So right before you go to adjust, just roll it back up and hook it. I could also go with a Blake's hitch. Yeah, do a Blake's hitch. Um, Matt 
There's, uh, can you please demonstrate why I'm folding? <laughs> I can do that. Do you really want me to? No, I think you're good. No, I can really do that, I promise. Um, and thank Climb you. a tree blindfolded too. It's on our YouTube channel. That's true. You should be able to do the majority of your system without even the, the steps. I rarely ever use a headlamp when I'm climbing uh, because you know I sometimes I'll turn on red to double check once I'm hooked in. But when I'm climbing, tying the steps on the tree, I it's just all by feel. You know, I do it so many times, just get the hang of it. Chris Novak says, keep up the great work. Peace, dudes. Wish we could have stayed for the life. Peace, thanks for having us. See you soon. Good seeing you, buddy. Uh, all right. Do you sell TP? Toilet paper? <laughs> no, but we could. You want toilet paper? All right. Any questions? Uh, keep them coming in. Trying to keep up. You want to do a um, this hedge? Do a Blake's hedge. Some we'll go over that again. For, I don't have some are better for prosthetic knots than others. I noticed a lot of my of my cheaper like HHS ones are super hard to adjust. Uh, what was it? Say it again. Are some are better for prosthetics than others? The biggest thing about a, a prosthetic, brusic, whatever you want to call it, it needs to be obviously smaller than the diameter of the rope that you're tying it onto. Um, it has to be between 1.5 to 2 millimeters smaller. Um, the beauty, so the, this pack is actually 6.8 millimeters, but the reason we use it is because of the strength and the fact that it bites so much harder. So it's not, it's not two millimeters smaller, but it bites so much harder because of the coating of the rope, the sheath of the rope. Um, so Sterling advised that we use this on the eight millimeter rope and it's worked incredible. Uh, you, you go to your cheaper ropes and they might not bite as well. They might be harder to adjust. A lot of your nylon um, and softer poly ropes are going to be a lot looser and not stiff like these. So they're going to bite super hard, but be very hard to adjust. Where these ropes are pretty stiff, so it's a lot easier to adjust, believe it or not, a stiffer rope than a very soft nylon poly rope that's going to be, you know, it's going to bite so hard and compress this rope that it's sometimes impossible to redress and adjust. Thanks. Uh, do you want to jump into the step? Yep. I have to get that thing closer. Okay. Put it on the ladder. So you guys, just fill us in. We're going to do a little bit more on tying the steps to the tree, uh, the knots and everything for the step, but we'll also leave this, you know, very open to any questions you have from anything this week that we can answer. So we're just gonna move this computer closer and all these phones to the tree so you can have a close up of the steps. Um, so we'll take a quick little break while we reset up. And then, like I said, any questions you got throughout the week, I don't care what the topic is, just let us know because we'll spend some time on the steps, but it won't be that long. All right. These packages outside. Yeah. Tell them I'm gonna put the package. One second. You guys are getting a little tour of the shop while we do a switcheroo. Alright, sorry for making anybody nauseous. There. You know, it's like a, it's like Friday. Everything's, nothing goes perfect on a Friday. All right, let's see. Check noise. Ever dye your rope? Like dye, like dye the color? No. Um, what type of knot is used to tie the steps? So, Johnny, we're going to get into step tying in just a second. We'll just move this here. Jump ball. Okay. 
good. Good? Yep. All right. All right, we'll do a couple techniques on tying the step. Uh, so said, does the Oplux hold up good for use on a pine tree? Other ropes I've had haven't held up well. Yeah, it's a very strong rope. Uh, it's cut and uh, heat resistant rope abrasion resistant rope it's super strong it's used by uh in the military it's a tactical rope that's where it was started um super super strong uh so the biggest thing is say you you buy a length of oplux there's techniques on how to cut it because you can't just take a knife to it and cut it uh the way to cut it is you take it you wrap electrical tape around it as tight as you can and then with we have very very high quality scissors uh what do you call them sewing scissors, people that cut fabric. They're very expensive, nice scissors. You try to take a normal pair of scissors to them, good luck. Um, so you cut the ends and then you melt the ends, burn them, then we shrink wrap them. So they're very, very hard to cut, um, very strong. Any All right, so the steps. So as I'm climbing, steps to be around my, I can actually go through that. I'll go through the knot first. Um, when I get to the tree, steps are always on my left side, sometimes on my right, depending on the tree, but left side, I pull a step out. First thing I do when I grab the step, I grab the rope and put it under the standoff. And I grab it with my hand just like that. The biggest mistake people make when they say their steps pop up, they're putting the rope on top of this on top of the standoff, so it will pop up. Rope goes under, so I always grab it just like this, out of my bag. Go around the tree, step goes right against the tree, go through the standoff, tail end, goes under the standoff, around the rung, you're making a loop. Again, I put the step against the tree so I know to go under the standoff, not over. Make the loop, pull the tension, pull the step up, right there that was too loose. So I uncam it, take a little slack out by just wiggling the rope, pull it back up. You can feel where it's about to go over center. So I'm pulling these standoffs up above this rope. You put it down here, it's gonna spring up and not cam. So you have to go up and over center. And you can feel right where it's about to go. Now it's locked in. Sometimes you grab the rope, pull it down a little bit, but that baby's solid. You can put as much side pressure on that as you want. Another way <coughs> to tie the loop and to take it off, you know you did the knot right when you can uncam it and just pull it right out. Another way to do the loop, again, same thing, step against the tree. Say it's a smaller tree and you have a long tail end of your rope. I find myself doing this a lot more. Step against the tree. And again, I'm standing on a step with both my heels. Lines in line around the tree, through the step, pull the rope up, make a loop, counterclockwise loop. So again, counterclockwise, one twist, back behind the rope, around the standoff, and that's the same exact loop. Again, that was a little soft. Take a little more tension out, pull it up. And the biggest thing you wanna do is when you're obviously it's easy when on telephone pole, but when you're climbing a tree, the bark, the tree is has different uh, diameter of it. Say you have a thicker bark here, you have a, a knot, a branch, or whatever. You want to pull these standoffs up and make sure they're both equally contacting this, the tree. So if you have just one standoff hitting and this the other one barely hitting, you're going to bend the step in the standoff. You want to pull it up. Make sure you have equal contact. You can feel it. That's why I use both hands. You can feel that they're both hitting and then cam it over. If it feels like it's going to pop up, pull it up a little more. Jam those standoffs into the tree.
and cam it over. It'll be rock solid. What's the, what's the number one biggest mistake people make when they're setting stuff? So when people are setting up aiders, we found we never had this problem until the explosion of aider systems, which are great. You can climb 30 feet with three steps. Um, but the problem is guys are getting their steps and then they're getting an aider system without not really knowing how to work the steps. And they're standing here, pull it down, but on their tippy toes, trying to get that first step for their nader suede or five step atria as high as they possibly can so they can get those extra couple feet and they're just pulling it up and just slamming it over. But they're not feeling the equal pressure because they're trying to get so high. So just bring that step down a little bit lower. I always put my steps up chest to head level because you can get it super tight and then drop your body weight into it. But to get the steps super, super tight, you don't have to crush it. You don't have to be Hercules. So when you pull it up, so say I put too much, I took too much slack out of the rope. It's not going to go. I can make it go, but I might bend the step. So if you're trying, trying, just stop. Let out eight quarter of an inch. I just let out a quarter of an inch. That was a little too much. So the tiny, tiny bit, tiniest bit of adjustment can go the right way. So again, I like to put my hands on top so I can feel. You can also put them down here, just a little harder to feel the pressure to stand off. So pull them up and say the backside of the rope slipping up the tree, say you're on a beach or telephone pole. Just slam the standoffs, push them into the tree. Then you can feel it. Boom, it's about to go right over. So that was a little loud when I'm climbing, trying to be quiet. This is a really tight step me being quiet. That was a little loud. That's because the rope flipped on the pole, which wouldn't happen on part. That wasn't the step that came, it was the rope that flipped. So there. So again, just be very conscious of making equal contact with your standoffs and feel, you can feel right here, it's about to go over center. Now it's over center and it's tight to the tree. So if you look down and see that one standoff is barely touching the tree and the other one is dug way in, just uncam it. So as you're climbing, when you find different points of the tree, like I said, if you have a knot or a hole or something, you may have to just move a couple inches to the right or left. And you may find that you need to readjust it. So readjusting is just pushing out a little bit or pulling back in. And then uh, with the tail ends, so as I'm climbing up, I'll take the tail end. If it's a small tree, I'll wrap it around and put it through the other side and just cinch it shut so I don't have tail ends flapping around in the wind. Or if you don't have enough tail end to go all the way around the tree, grab your rope. I just stick it up right here like this and push it back in. Or you can double it over. So now that rope's not flapping around. And then when you're done, oh. So what happens if you don't go through the rope, if you go over the rope? And yeah, so stuck? when you see online people saying that uh, my step's flipping up, that is because they're starting like this. That's why I said when I grab the step out of the bag, I grab it and I hold it like this. So the rope is under the standoff. If you go over, you can tie it on, but it'll flip up. The other problem is everyone tries to tie it back here. So then they'll also do that. They'll go over. And then I'm trying to adjust the knot out here. I've seen this on a lot of YouTube videos. You can get it to stay, but it's going to flip up. So be very conscious. We grab it out of the bag, right or left handed, slide it all the way over. And I just put my pointer finger on one side, my middle finger on the other side, thumb on the top, around the tree. The step goes right to the tree. Go through, twist it. If 
on the tension, it's a little loose. Cam it over. If you don't, if you don't go over the rope and behind the step, you go over the rope and over the oh, step. Oh yeah. So then another problem guys do is another critical part. Step against three. If you go under here, a lot of guys will do this. Instead of going through the rope in the rung like that, they'll go under, which you can tie it. We can tie it, and it works, but it's 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 biting the rope, so it's very hard to adjust because you can't. You have to really mess with it. So, again, around, go through, not under, go through the rope in the rung, up, back down. And again, you always know that you always know that you did it correct when you can uncam it, and the rope, the knot just comes completely undone. Um, where's the best place to attach a movable aider? I used three-step movable aider last year and just put the hook on the crossbar but could see it maybe sliding left or right with pressure. Uh, yeah, so on my original aider videos, I would always hook hook it right to the, the crossbar right here, but then I found myself hooking it to the V-pick at the bottom. Um, works a lot better. Some guys will actually tape on each side of the bar here so that their air will not move back and forth. But again, you can hook it to the bottom of the V pick, but then the problem is your foot is so much closer to the tree. So by hooking it here, you have more movement. That's why I like, anytime I use an aider, I use two loops on the end of a rope, put them on, on the standoffs. So they're hanging out here and there's no way for anything, anything to sway. But then I've also messed around with uh, the bow hunting fiend gave me this idea. I made this step with a actual V in it for aiders, so that might be another possibility uh, down the road as we mess with it a little more. So your aider clips in there and doesn't go anywhere. Um, so, oops, poking my head in that one. Try to look for comments. Uh, I don't see any questions. If you guys asked a question and we miss it, send it again. Um, but I think it's time to do a t-shirt giveaway. Mm -hmm. Hold that up with your beautiful face. So I'm going to scroll. Wild well, that shirt. Let's see. We're going to do a quick scroll. All right. Zach Farrell, are you are you still watching? If Zach Farrell is online, uh, shoot us a, a DM or an email, and we'll get you this t-shirt in the mail. You're the winner. You're the lucky winner. Let us know your size. Cool. And stay tuned. Uh, maybe we'll do something else later towards the end. So, guys, keep them, keep the questions coming. Anything we covered this week, fair game. Uh, we talked about the Berserker. We talked about style platforms. talked about knots, um, gear setups. So any questions you have, uh, just shoot them into the chat. Thanks. I love your hair. I think she's talking about you, Meg. <laughs> well, not your hair. You may have said it, but the bar you made for the hater, is that special order? Oh, uh, that's something that I've just been messing around with. Um, I could definitely, I'm looking at, now that the shop's done and everything's set up, I'm looking at ways where I could put wings on perches and be more organized and, you know, do stuff like this, custom orders for people. So it's definitely a, something in the future that we can do 100%. So just stay tuned, reach out to us on customer service. Um, and then our rep, she will forward us, forward you to me. And then I can, I can make anything custom happen for anybody. We've had a lot of guys coming in uh, that are local, bringing their old saddles in. They want the new bridge put on, so I've been doing that. I got two guys coming in tomorrow. I'm gonna hook their saddles up with that. They said they can't afford the our new saddle, so they're just gonna rock their old saddle because they love our bridge. But I bet once I get them in the saddle, <laughs> we'll change their mind. But yeah, any anything <laughs> ropes custom you guys want, reach out to us. Um, anything like this, 
I can make happen for you. Purchase steps back for the eight hook. Yeah, we're we're working on that. That's something we can we can definitely do. Uh, just give us. We literally just moved in a week or two ago, and we're still organizing everything, getting everything together. So during this off season, I want to make sure I can do anything custom for anyone that they want. Well, here's a good one. What's the difference between the Primal V and Wild Edge? Yeah, the Primal V. It's a Chinese knockoff. It's made in China. They sell it on the Sportsman's Guide for. We pay triple what they're selling it for, um, for the step. So I don't know how they're get, they're getting a mask made in China somehow for super cheap. So I have no idea how they're getting it made like that. Our material co costs is about as much as what they're selling it for. So it's a Chinese knockoff. But if you want to use the perch or anything else, it will not fit in that. It's totally different dimensions. We bought some just to mess around with them and see what's going on and. They're all different dimensions. They don't stack. They won't fit in the bags. The perch won't fit in it. And it has a strap on it that is kind of worthless. Um, I think you had. I have Side pressure for using with the platform. No, the steps. I was never a platform guy. Uh, then I started, we had to use the perch and then the battlement. Uh, the, the side pressure is you can. We had, we've had at trade shows, we've had 400 pound guys jumping on the side of the steps and they're not going anywhere. So that's the biggest advantage having steps as a platform is you can stick your heel in the step. You can stick your toe in the step. You're not standing on a, on a flat surface, which is why our platforms don't look like a box because you need those angles to get around the tree. If you're only using the platform, guys that get in saddle hunting, they immediately think in their head, I went from a tree stand. So now I need a platform the size of a tree stand or half the size. So they want this giant platform. That's almost limiting your shots because you can only swing around the tree so much. You have to, the whole point of saddle hunting is to get around the tree and have the mobility to shoot 360 around the tree. So using those angles, if you're on a flat surface and you're trying to twist around the tree, your feet are gonna wanna have something to stand on, something to push against on a flat surface when you're at that angle, it's hard. So that's why with our platforms, we have those angles on them. Uh, same angles on the battlement as the perch, these hard angles on the backside to get around the tree. Uh, and then again, with the step, if I have the perch here and then another step here, I can stick my toe in there or my heel and I'm locked in like a stirrup. So that's uh, the biggest thing that new guys don't understand. They think that they need to be standing up on a big platform, but it just, it almost defeats the whole purpose. Um, what is, are two kiss lines good for all situations? Oh yeah, two kiss lines or two wild edge line kits, which is the duck and the oval carabiner. They all work. Uh, it's just personal preference if you want. Um, the system of the kiss line, which is, it's all rope on rope, or you want the mechanical ascender like the duck. It's all personal preference. The duck is very, very quick and easy to make small adjustments, micro adjustments. So when I'm going in to put presets up, uh, I found myself using the the duck a lot more because it's super quick. I'm adjusting my lines and line the whole way. Um, but going in with one line, I found myself using more of the kiss line. Um, so that's one rope. This rope starts as my lines and line becomes my tether as I lock my bridge into a step to switch. But it's all personal preference. Um, what is the rating for the Berserker weight rating? Uh, we've, we had, we had it tested. We had it tested to 3,300 pounds held for three minutes at 3,300 3, pounds stretched, um, multiple times, n no damage, but, uh, I don't even know what's our weight rating. It's something like 400 pounds, but I mean, they could hold a lot more than 400 pounds, but I don't see many four or 500 pound guys climbing trees. So the weight rating is it's built by a climbing company that makes climbing harnesses, arbor saddles. So all the testing was done legit. Uh, have you ever had an issue on soccer trees at the bottom point of the step digging in and slipping a little bit? So yeah, with, with softer trees, Tell 
Um, hold on. So softer trees like a pine. What you're going to want to do is get around the tree, just like you're going to set up on any other tree. And say you pull that step up, and one side is obviously sticking in more because it's on a piece of bark, and this side isn't. What I'll do on like a pine, I'll just sit there and kind of scrape the big, flaky, giant pieces of bark off, pull the step up and cam it over. Uh, you can also, since it's such a soft wood tree, soft bark, maybe just wiggle a little bit, pull it up, and just cam it and crush right through that bark. So you have to get through that bark. Your standoffs, if your bottom's slipping, that means your top standoffs aren't into the tree. So you have to get into the tree. Um, and so like on big oaks, uh, you might be able to shave a little bark off, but you're going to want to find a spot, like I said, by moving two, a couple inches to the left or right, and find a spot where both standoffs will equally contact and cam it over. So my steps on the way up, I'm getting them tight, but I'm not really worried if I'm overly hunting to get them rock solid tight like I'm going to hang a four-wheeler off of them because I'm going up and I'm coming right back down. Steps are going away. When I get to my platform, I'm going to take a little bit more time and make sure that those are perfect, perfect, super tight. That's why I said last night when I'm climbing, if I'm climbing, I go, okay, I'm going up the tree. I think my platform height should be right here. I'll go up without setting my platform up. I'll stand on this step, look around and go either, okay, it's good or nope, I got a branch right there. I can't shoot there. Either I have to go higher or lower. I might have to go higher to get over some shit. I might have to get lower to get under some shit. So then I'll jump back down, readjust my platform to where I think it should be. Jump back up, sometimes double check. Okay, good. Because I'm hunting a lot of thick areas. So I'm not trimming shooting lanes in the way in. So I got to pick where I want to be and what side of the tree I want to be on. I might go, oh, I got to be on this side of the tree actually. Swing my step over, lock my platform in, set my shit up, then jump up with there and start putting my gear together. Would you go with five steps in a perch or or a battlement or eight steps with two to three for the platform? I go back and forth all over the place. Um, I spent a lot of time hunting out of the battlement because it was a new product. Um, and I found myself liking it more and more. I was never a platform guy. I was always a ring of step guy. And then we got the perch and I was a perch and a ring of step guy. I go back and forth. Uh, then we got the battlement and I it's it's super comfortable. Um, so, uh, when it comes to five or eight steps, no matter what your platform is, I'd go with eight, uh, because I would rather carry more in and not need them. Like I talked about before, say I only needed five steps. I had three extras and then I only had my one platform. Well, sweet. I'll put another step on one side, usually on my weak side as another foothold platform. And then I'll take, if I have extras, maybe another one on the other side. And then I'll always make sure I have an extra step right here. So if I'm standing right here on my platform, I'll have a step right here. And that step is right here. I have my bow hanger on the other side attached to the rope. Bow hangs on the left side because I'm a righty. My backpack hangs here on the step. Backpack opens up. Binoculars go right in the step here. Uh, water bottles right there accessible in my bag. Grunt calls right there, either in a cargo pocket or in the bag. Uh, wind checker. Everything's right there in my bag accessible. Then I'll buckle my bag around the tree. That's also my knee pad or my tree pad for my knees. So that whole system of that one step is holding a lot of shit on the tree. Uh, weight of each step? Uh, just under a pound. And would you use a Ropeman 2 on the 8-millimeter line? Uh, we've had a lot of guys saying the Ropeman 2 is cutting into – the eight millimeter lines because the teeth are a lot more aggressive than the Kong duck. The Kong duck has a lot smaller teeth, less aggressive teeth. So there's the rope in one has bigger and more teeth. Uh, so it's going to be harder on the rope, pinching the rope where the duck has less teeth and less aggressive teeth. I mean, more teeth and less aggressive teeth. So it's going to, it's a lot easier on the rope. Um, and then I definitely suggest the oval one carabiner that we sell from Kong for the duck because it's made for the duck because it rotates all the way through. So you try to put a normal carabiner in the duck, it's going to bind. And aluminum does not like to be stressed when it's in that position. Um, do you ever get set up in the dark and then find out you need to move up or down after shooting light? All the time. 
What do you do? Not all the time, but a lot. Yeah. Um, so I have no problem moving. Even if I get into a spot and the wind starts, you know, says it's going to be one thing. Uh, you got to understand thermals. Wind thermals will change wind, like you wouldn't believe. That I'm off topic, but yes, I will find myself like all of a sudden it gets light out. You look around with your headlamp, like okay, this looks good in the dark, and then it gets light out, and you're like fuck, I have to go down a foot, two feet, three feet, sometimes, or you got to go up five feet. That's why I like having extra steps, so then I can go okay. I have to go higher. I don't have any more steps, but I can sacrifice my two steps on the side to get higher. Um, or I'll always carry an extra aid or just for that instance where it's like, okay, I really want to save these steps from my platform, but I want to go higher, grab the eight or the pack, go. I also always carry an extra line in my pack, lines in line, um, lines in line and aider. I rarely use an aider, but I'll always carry one just in case for those situations. And I'll, yeah, I'll go higher or lower because once it gets light out, the whole woods changes. Can we buy the bag separately? Bought some singles when I was trying them out, and now I want to have enough. Yep. Yeah, we sell the bag separately online. And the bag, you know, we used to sell with or without the bag, um, but then we found a lot of guys coming back to buy the bag, so now we include it with the set of steps, unless you're buying one or two steps. Uh, the bag is very simple, very easy to use. Um, it works well. So guys that try to climb without the bag, it's – it's like climbing sticks. You don't know where to put anything. Do you have issues with the stand-ups pulling away from the tree after standing on the perch for a long period of time? I've never had a problem. That's because the biggest thing. So the biggest thing with the perch. Oh, actually, it's just a step. So with the perch. I'll get, I'll get my step up, cam into the tree, not super tight, not killing it, grab your perch, put it in the step, a lot of guys will then jump on the step, on the perch, don't do that, uncam it, because now I have all, I have all this leverage, so I, I could push this over with my finger, where before I had to use both hands with the step, Take all this tension out of the rope, all the tension, put the perch right against the tree. This is why I always put my platform up above my head. That's why I say I jump up, check everything, and then jump back down. You saw Trevor last night standing on his platform trying to monkey with a step down here. It's a lot harder. So then I'll jump down, pull this up, and cam it over as hard as I can. And I've never, ever had a step move. Granted, some cases when I was hunting dead ash trees along the river that have been dead for a couple of years but it wasn't the smartest dead but ash not dead ass dead ash ash trees <laughs> yes the soft dead bark and tree would loosen a little bit but any live tree i've never had a problem again take all your slack out be under the perch pull it up as high as you can and cam it over like I just bit into the telephone pole. It's in there a good three eighths of an inch. So it is not going anywhere. So you have all that leverage. So you'd never be able to get that step that tight without this on it. Okay. Um, is there a way to use your tether for a rifle hold or some other way to steady a rifle to shoot? I do that all the time. Everyone asks, can you gun hunt out of a saddle? And it's freaking, it's awesome because I'll just hook this to my shirt just to pretend. But if I'm in the saddle facing the tree, you always have a gun rest. And a lot of times I found myself, I'd wrap my arm, you know, it'd be tight, but I wrap my arm around my tether and I'd have an extra hold. That's why I like this loop down here. You know, I can, I can, you can use the rope and the tree as a rest. So if this were tighter, I was in the saddle. You can show that in a minute, but you have your rope and then you always have the tree as a rest so with a gun say i'm i'm hunting i rarely hunt fields but say you have a big open field you midwest hunters hunting cornfields i would have the woods to my back and i'd be facing the field because you have this perfect shooting rest so yeah hunting out with a gun is it's sweet and i always hang my gun on my left side barrel down so i can just grab the gun right off the bow sling 
or a bow hanger. Jake says Molly attachments on the bag would be cool to attach to the saddle while climbing. Yeah, we're actually looking into starting to make the bags in house so we can do more custom uh, improvements on them. So that's definitely an option. We've messed around. We have a another a new carry bag coming that could possibly be coming out soon. That it's kind of it's the carry bag that has pocket straps on it turns more into a backpack too. Um, Predatory Outdoors says, if I order a step kit, can I get a bigger bag with it to hold the steps I already have? Yeah, you can go on to build your own steps and you can choose, say you want eight steps in a 12 bag, eight steps in a 10 bag. A lot of guys do that. Um, less, I do that a lot too, less steps. In the, so say I have six steps in a 10 bag, then you have room on the top for your lines and line, your tether, whatever you need. Uh, or like Lydia attaches, keeps his perch attached to the step and puts it on top of her bag. Um, so, yeah, the bigger bag, I, I would always suggest ordering a bigger bag with lesser steps. If you're going to do build your own. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kevin Tatro is getting his saddle tomorrow and can't wait. Um, Matt says, what was the backpack you had on the other day with all the straps? Uh, that was a Badlands pack. But my buddy... Paul Stewart, Peace Stews on Instagram, and his girlfriend, Crystal, stopped by today, and he brought a Kafaru pack, Kafaru, yeah. and it was freaking sweet, and we were messing around with it, and that might be the next pack I go to. Uh, the biggest advantage of it is it's a lot bigger than the Badlands pack, but the cool part about, he's, I think it's like the Striker XL, their new one that came out with, it's a frame pack, hard frame pack with a soft backpack that goes onto it and you can choose different pockets and adjustments and everything it opens up so it's sweet for packing out deer i pack out a lot of my deer especially on public land or via kayak or from water accessing because in some spots i cannot physically drag a deer out it's so thick so i found myself with that badlands pack it's a sweet perfect size pack but to fit an entire deer now i usually had to do two trips uh, but to have a bigger pack would be really advantageous for packing deer out in the pocket, everything about it was, it's made in the USA, Kafaru, and it was, it was super high quality. I liked it a lot, so that might be the next pack I'm switching to. Um, what do you think about using the cane method with your wild edge steps? Refresh me on the cane method. I know I've seen it a hundred times. Cane method is with basically an atria. Yeah. Yeah, fill us in on the cane method. I want to just say a little bit about it and it'll spark my memory. Um, I know, I remember seeing that on Saddle Hunter. How can you replace the old ropes on your steps? Just uh, on our site, we sell replacement ropes. So we'll send you your ropes. If you want six foot or eight foot lengths, we'll send you a splicing tool and the instructions. And it's very easy. I can do, I can do a video on that next, uh, maybe next week on splicing your steps. Super simple. Um, how would how would you pack two steps without the bag? I've got shikars in a battlement, but thinking about picking up two steps. So that's like what Trevor does. The guys are using sticks and the steps as a platform. What they'll do is the best way that I've seen is uh, Genesis 3D printing actually does make a clip for the steps. I have it right over there. But the, I don't know what you call those gear, at the hardware store, they have like, they're called, they're like gear ties. It's like, as it's metal inside with rubber coating outside, like twist ties. So guys will twist tie the steps right to their saddle, to the hip or to the backpack. Uh, I've seen guys, you know, take, take the ropes and just wrap them around and then twist tie them right to their saddle uh, or right to their backpack. I always have my steps in the bag because I'm climbing with the steps. But I mean, there's a lot of ways to, to do it, but those uh, those gear twist ties are what I've seen that work the best. I'll show you the... So Genesis 3D printing sells made me these he sells them on the site so this is the small clip it's for one two it's for three steps and then has another piece that I think it's up in my office 
that then attaches to your saddle. So the only thing you have to do is figure out how to coil, coil your ropes up and get them out of the way. But again, this hooks there or this attachment right there, that little loop that can go clip to the steps and this can go right in a molly loop. So you can hang it right there. This is actually an extra attachment for the perch. You wanna put the perch on the back. So this would work pretty slick, but a couple other ways to do it. He also makes one that holds, I think it's eight steps. So we've been messing around with these and works pretty cool. What's the best way to repair a bent step? So if you have a truck hitch, say you, I can actually. Oh, Steven says you're talking about night eyes gear ties. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Um, if you crush a standoff in, I can actually bend one. So if I was going to bend one, see, I, I just put all the force on that one side. So if I want to bend it back, the best way I put it in a vise and pull it back. Metal is going to want the metal that's bent is going to want to go back to its original form. So where it was bent first. So truck hitch, put it right in like your uh, in your hitch or in the slots for your safety chains, or put it in a limb. Or like I can put it right here in this platform. And I just I just bent it back. That was a little too much. So I just bent it back. Now it's good. So just tweak it back. So say then it's bent in a little bit. So I'm just putting it right into the top of the battlement platform. Now I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. So that's now looking pretty good. All right, any other questions? Let's we'll see. Does the Kong duck ever get in the way when you're trying to make the shot directly behind you? I know some guys end up with the rope across their chest. That's their shoulder. That's, that's a, a big thing. problem. Uh, a couple of companies suggested doing this and I never understood, especially at trade shows, you get guys that come and they want to test out your platforms and they'll jump on the platform and then they'll go, Oh yeah, this is great. There's a lot of room. I would never, ever, ever spin around on my platform like that. If I was hunting and I wanted to make a shot this way, I would just turn. I'd turn this way. I would turn this way. Or I'd bring my bow over my bridge. I'd put my foot on the other side of the tree and I'd turn, I don't know my saddle on, but I'd turn this way. So I would never, ever stand up and turn around. I'm always leaning way back. So this rope is always attached to my bridge. It's never, I never turn like this. I'm always, if I'm gonna turn this way hard, I'm swinging, my saddles, my bridge is rotating. So my bridge would be back here like this. It would never ever be right here. That's wrong. I would never want a rope around my neck. We can do that. I'm going to start, we're going to start doing live videos every week. Uh, so I think uh, another big topic would be shot angles. And I think we'll try to do it outside so I can have more mobility and actually have my bow and shoot to show different shot opportunities, different platforms, positions, even just resting in the tree. Um, go through basically everything all over again. But yeah, don't. The other part about that was guys that would come up and start saddle hunting. They want to stand on the platform and stand up like they're in a tree stand. When you do that, you have no mobility. You can't move. Your bridge is always in your way. I had a buddy, a buddy Chris, terrified of heights, and he kept saying, I can't get a shot. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. He swung by. I said, okay, set up like you're hunting. And he was standing like this against a tree. He could not move. He couldn't even get his bow around his arm on the other side. So I showed him, be confident in your equipment. That's why you practice and lean, you lean back so that you have mobility around the tree. So I have mobility all the way around the tree like this. 
and I can cross over, I can move, I can twist. If you're standing up with your snoot against the tree, you can't, It's you might as well go back to a tree stand. So don't be afraid to lean back a little bit. That's why you practice. Be confident in your equipment. That's why I always say do the three check safety, loop, loop, attached, bridge, three or four step, whatever you want to call it. I go through everything before I lean back. I double, triple check everything. In the dark, I may even just turn my headlamp on just to double check. Okay, good, good, good. Because in the dark, when you're going to lean back, when you're 20 feet up, it's might make your butthole pucker a little bit. But be confident in your equipment, practice, make sure everything's set up, everything's good, tweaked. And that's why you practice. So when you go in the dark or you go in the woods, you just know where everything is and how everything works because every setup's different, every tree's different, um, every hunt's different. How long would you leave your ropes and steps in a tree if you're not mobile? Years. Okay. I've left them in for a long time. Uh, the problem is, longer you leave them in, so not years. I suggest every season go out and if you're going to leave the steps until the next season, just uncam them, loosen the rope a little bit, recam them. So uncam it, move it, you know, an inch or two to the right or left, recam it. Because what will happen is I've left steps and trees for eight, nine years. Even after two years, the tree starts growing into the steps, the standoffs, and you can't get the step off the tree. You have to cut the ropes. So I suggest just uncamming them or take the best way to do it. Don't be lazy. Take them out of the tree and then put them back up. But they will last a long time. Jim Step has had a step on a tree in his yard in a pine tree for, I think we're going on 12, 13 years now. And the rope is growing into the tree. The tree grew around the step. I don't suggest that, but. Have you ever used the step with an eater like a like the one sticking? After? No. <laughs> no, that 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 scares the shit out of me. I'm not scared of heights or climbing, but no, the one sticking thing kind of blows my mind. Because what happens if you drop that sticker step? Better have spurs. It works. It's great. I just don't suggest it. Awesome. Uh, trying to see if there's any more comments, guys. Get them in and we're about to wrap up. So another great video, great info. Um, it's like a chase is every week would be so handy. The first company I've seen to do this and it's been informative. So thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to get on the trend of doing at least a live video every week and we'll let you know when it's going to happen. And I'll do a this week was hard doing it. We had to do it a little early with the family at home. So when I just do one video a week or two videos a week, I'll do it later. So more guys can tune in after work. But if you haven't tuned in, you can find everything on Facebook, YouTube and everything. But uh, we'll definitely do a couple late ones. Mm -hmm. And then we can do some weekend ones too. If you guys would rather on a weekend, like a Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, mornings, whatever, just let us know what works best for you guys. We'll always save them. Yeah. Post them. Awesome. Um... Oopsies. This three cameras thing is tough. Maybe we'll have to rotate what social media platform we're on and then just share them to the others. Um, thanks, guys, for coming and tuning in. I uh, really appreciate the support that we've received this past week in our experiment in having a virtual trade show. Uh, we never really thought that it would come to us going live on social media to actually yeah. like hang out with other hunters and, and share knowledge and, and stuff like that. So thanks for putting up with us, kind of developing some new capabilities and doing this for the first time. We had a lot of fun this week. Um, like I said earlier, if you were here in the beginning, uh, we have the sale is live on the site until Sunday evening. So that's Sunday night, um, Eastern Standard Time, it'll come down. Uh, so take advantage of it while you can. Like Drew said earlier in the week, now's the time to practice with your gear. Now's the time to dial in your system and um, figure out what you like, what works for you, isn't necessarily gonna work from the next guy you saw on YouTube um, and what works for him might not work for you. So get it dialed in now in the off season, uh, practice at ground level, be safe. And um, we're gonna be picking a winner for the Berserker this weekend. So stay tuned, it could be you. Follow us on Instagram, subscribe to YouTube, uh, go comment on that post, all those things get you entries. Share this post after we post it. Um, and again, thank you.
Yeah, thanks, guys. I wish I could have seen a lot of you at Harrisburg and the other shows we we're going to go to, but sucks we weren't there. This actually worked out well. It's been a ton of positive support uh, and comments about it. A ton of great emails from new saddle hunters and experienced ones. So I uh, love having you guys. And, again, we'll, we're going to keep this up and do at least one or two a week from now on. And uh, we'll pick a topic or you guys let us know what topics you want us to talk about and we'll uh, we'll cover it. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.